The name on high. I just want to praise you. Oh, yes. Lift our hands and say, I love you. You are everything to me. Oh yes, oh yes, I exalt your holy name, I exalt your holy name, I exalt your holy name. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I exalt your holy name. The life of a prophet. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. Lift our hands and say, I love you, you are everything to me, I exalt your holy name, oh yes, I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name on high. Oh, yes, I just want to praise you. Oh, yes, oh, yes, live my life and say, I love you. You are everything to me. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, I exalt your holy name, oh yes, oh yes. Jesus, we exalt your holy name. I'm telling you, saints, it's so powerful. This is going to be a powerful time on here, saints. Bless everyone. Oh, I just want to praise you. Oh, yes. Lift my hands and say, I love you. This song is going to be in your spirit. You are everything to me, oh yes, oh yes. I exalt your holy name, oh yes, yes. I exalt your holy name. On high, I just want to praise you. Saints, as you're joining on, prepare for this mighty impartation from the Lord. I mean, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Saints, where you are in the spirit will decide 
your confidence. Where you are in the spirit will decide your confidence. Your confidence can't be in people. It can't be in things. It can't be in money. It can't be in your job. It can't be in your family. It can't be in your children. It can't be in your mother and father. Your confidence has to be rooted in a spiritual place with Jesus. When you know where you are in the spirit, it creates confidence. Why did Jesus have such a boldness about him? Because he knew where he was in the spirit. The father had just said, he just had said, uh, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So he knew where he was in the spirit. So it empowered him to be bold. He, he didn't have an issue casting out devils with a word. He didn't have an issue of speaking to the winds and the waves. Why? Because the father had just told him. This is where you stand with me. Godly confidence is way greater than the confidence of this world. Godly confidence is supernatural. When you receive godly confidence, ain't nobody can con you out of where you are with God. People can lie uh, to you. They can try to deceive you. Your confidence will remain established. So saints, it's connected to where you are in the spirit. And number two, purity empowers you. I'm just hearing God say this. I'm just saying what he's saying. <laughs> I don't know why the people get on my line and can't spell. I guess you from the board too. Uh, purity empowers. It empowers it 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 empowers you what it causes you to uh have a greater stability than most people cuz when you're pure you'll know it why because all you can see is Jesus you know if you're pure because all purity can see is Jesus purity can't see anything else it can't see financial issues it can't see uh, it can't see warfare, it can't see demons, it can't see flesh. Purity just sees God. Remember what I say, bless out a pure in heart, for they shall see God. Isn't that powerful? All you can do when you're pure is see God. Isn't that amazing? Saints, I want y'all to really catch that. Purity is it empowers you. It's an anointing to see God. So saying, some people say, how do you know if someone is pure? Well, what are the signs? What, what are they doing? What, 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 what are they, they, they operating in to be pure? You will know if you're pure because all you see is God. If you see something else, you're not pure yet. If you go into prayer and you still see what someone did to you, you still see uh, who hurt you, you still see... What, what what people said about you, if you still see, you're not pure yet. Now, here's the powerful thing. Everybody must learn to stay in the presence of God for long enough to become pure. Sometimes you're not going to be pure. The saints, why I said what was so powerful is that I rather avoid, I rather avoid what's not destined for my spirit rather than receive what's not destined for my spirit and have to cast it out. Saints, so many times you, you, you can have unnecessary battles in your mind just because you opened up your mind to something. You looked at something. You heard something that, that the Lord Jesus really didn't want you to hear, but your curiosity wanted to hear it. Your curiosity wanted to see it. Saints, I've learned to live a mild life. Meaning, I, I'm not really interested with the, the worldly news. I don't, I don't know what uh, President Trump is doing. I, I don't know what the government is doing. I just hear God about the government. I just hear God about President Trump. I just hear the Lord Jesus about what uh, going on in in the world. I don't watch news. I don't uh, anybody that has ever been around me. I never turn on the news. I, I can go to a hotel. Saints, I don't even know why they put a, whole, uh, uh, a TV in the hotel room because I never watch it. 
<laughs> Anybody that know me, uh, I never watch, uh, I never watch television inside of a of a hotel. I I don't watch what's going on in the world. There's no hunger. And saints, though I have TVs, it's like I shouldn't have TVs. I don't really utilize them too much. I just use them for worship. I just use them for uh, worship. Saints, even if I go on YouTube or if I go on uh, some type of social media, I don't browse around. And, and, and saints, I've had many people over the years, they'll come and they'll say, hey, did you hear about what happened to this one? And I'll be like, listen, I can't hear what happened to this one because that's not my assignment. <laughs> that's their that's their business. I'm I'm over here enjoying Jesus. Listen, I I ain't got time. I, I listen. I'm up here pinning this bucket of hair grease in my head. Listen, I'm pinning this bucket of uh, listen. I'm pinning this bucket of hair grease. Since everybody share this broadcast, invite your follow. I'm up here pinning this bucket of hair grease. I ain't, I ain't, and listen. I'm trying to get these curls right. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to make sure. I'm trying to make sure my hair ain't ashy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And somebody touch your neighbor. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I ain't got no time. And saints, what if you had that mentality? What if you had that mentality? You'll be so safe. And saints, people try to get you hemmed up in other people's business. No! That's not my assignment. If it's not my assignment, don't assign it to me. If it's not my assignment, don't assign it to me. Say, somebody need to write that down. You need to start decreeing that more. If it's not my assignment, don't assign it to me. I only want what God permits. I don't want any illegal activity in my life. I don't want any illegal conversations in my life. I don't want any illegal people in my life. If, if the Lord didn't send you, you got to get the... You, you, you got to start having a stronger tenacity. Nobody is going to guard you like you. You hear what I said? Nobody is going to guard you like you. You going to have to learn how to protect. Listen, I just heard the Lord say this. When you stop neglecting me, you start protecting me inside of you. If somebody taking notes, write that down. If somebody, you can write it across the screen for me. This is the word of the Lord. He said, when you start, when you stop neglecting me, you start protecting me inside of you. So saints, we always talk about God protecting us. But God's protection is connected to our fellowship with him. Your worship is guarding God's gates. Imagine that. Your worship is guard, guarding God's gates. You, we talk about our gates, but saints, the Holy Spirit has gates. Why, why do you think Ephesians say, let's go there. Let's go there. I love this Bible right here, saints. This is a King James Bible. This is a, this this Bible right here is, is fleeky. Somebody touch your neighbor and say fleeky. I didn't say freaky. I said fleeky. You see, you're up too late. <laughs> That's why you thought I said freaky. I didn't say freaky. I said fleeky. Huh? You up too late. You tired. Wake yourself up. See, that about five people. Five people just woke up just right there. Five people just woke up right there. Why? Why? Because they, they, they had me. They were sleeping right there. I just woke them up just now. That, that was enough right there. They just woke up. I want to show you something. This is so powerful. Lift my hands and say I love you, you are everything to me, oh yes, oh yes, I exalt your whole 
Lename. I want to show you something. I exalt your holy name. Look what Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says. It says, grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you were sealed for the day of redemption. Grieve not. Now, now I, I, want, you, I want you to see this, saints. This is showing you that the Holy Spirit has an emotional realm. This is the emotional realm of the Holy Spirit. Look what it just said. It said, grieve not the Holy Spirit. So, so for you to be grieved, Watch this, saints. If you notice about something about grief, people get grieved when someone dies. They get grieved when, when things happen that are deadly. Things uh, like fatal things happen in their life. Something that they is very tragic. A tragedy happens. Saints, you can kill and, 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 and release an atmosphere of death, death to the Holy Spirit because you're not focused. And see, saints, I want you to hear me. Sometimes you're not happy because God is really not happy. Sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes you're not happy because God is not happy. There's something still operating that, that, that grieves him. It might be that you refuse to. You refuse to praise God. It could be that you refuse to leave someone. It could be you refuse to focus. It, it could be you refuse to be uh, mature. It could be that you refuse to go, uh, uh, to stop gossiping. It can, it can be anything in your life that causes you to start grieving the Holy Spirit. But watch what the Bible say in, in Ephesians chapter 4.29. It said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, only that which is good, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Once again, I'm in Ephesians chapter 4, 29, and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. It said, in Ephesians chapter 4, 29, it said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, only that which is good, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Let me define this scripture to you. I want you to see the symbolism in the scripture. What is a corrupt word? A corrupt word is an interrupt word. If you take a note, write that down. You notice that the Bible said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Then it says, only that which is good that it may impart grace to the hearer. So it was dealing with anything that can interrupt you from faith. A corrupt word is anything that can interrupt you from focusing on God. A corrupt word is what can interrupt you from being uh, loyal. Like some, 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 some people don't realize you have so many people come into your life that corrupt you. You're not loyal to anybody. Saints, as a matter of fact, the fruit of corruption is disloyalty. Always remember that the fruit of corruption is disloyalty. See, saints, what happened was Cain killed his brother, Abel, in the book of Genesis because he was corrupt. Meaning that his heart was interrupted from walking in love. His, his heart was interrupted from walking in maturity and obedience and faith and the, the, the fruit of the spirit. So it was interrupted. That's why it was corrupted. Corruption is an interruption of anything that God loves. Always remember that. Remember the Lord loves truth. Remember he loves unity. He loves love. He loves forgiveness. He loves mercy. As a matter of fact, the Bible even said that he does not love uh, judgment. He he really don't want to 
have to judge anybody. He would like to show mercy to everybody. Remember the book of James say that is he rather mercy over judgment. But why does judgment have to happen? Because Nineveh won't repent. Remember when Nineveh repented, God showed mercy. Remember when the woman at the well repented, God showed mercy. There's something that deep, deepens the prophetic anointing where you can walk in forgiveness. Now, saints, forgiveness doesn't mean that your enemies are getting away. Forgiveness means that you are giving your enemies away. Who are you giving them away to? God. What is God going to do? He's going to deal with them. It's not your job. Forgiveness is something that deepens the prophetic anointing because why? It's a sign of maturity. Once God sees that you're mature, he gives you more. When he sees that you're mature, he gives you more. He does not give you more until you're mature. When he sees uh, your maturity, the increase of the anointing becomes a certainty. But God has to see it first. He, he, he has to see it in you. So saints, I, I, want you, I, I want you to hear me very clearly. There are some people that are sent by Satan. But God doesn't stop them. Why? Because you're going to another level of maturity. I had a vision. In the vision. I saw Jeremiah. I was taken in the spirit. And I saw the prophet Jeremiah. And the prophet Jeremiah, when I saw him, he was weeping. He was crying. He was sobbing. My question to him was, I was in the spirit realm. The Lord took me on a spiritual chariot. And as I rode the chariot, it took me to the exact location of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was in, he was in paradise. He got his own place. When you're a prophet or you're connected to a prophet, there's a special honor that you receive even in heaven. As a matter of fact, there's a neighborhood in heaven just for prophets, just for those that carried the prophetic assignment and they were faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. They did not get corrupt by the world. They did not get corrupt by, uh, uh, they did not get corrupt by the world. They stayed true. To Jesus, they stayed true. To the people of God, they stayed true to what he called them to do. There's a, there's a neighborhood, there's a special reward. Saints, this is what you must understand. This is why the Bible says that the prophet's reward, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you'll receive a prophet's reward. Why did he call it a prophet's reward? One of the prophet's reward is that you'll get to share in divine privileges from God that a prophet shares in. The reason why there was so much, uh, there was so much grace on um, the service of the prophet, the sons of the prophet, the daughters of the prophet. Why, why, why do we see such grace upon their life? Because they were receiving the prophet's reward. But you can't receive who you can't receive a reward from who you don't believe. And so it takes believing. That's why 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20 say, believe the prophet, you'll receive the prophet's reward. And it's in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, because 20, 20 is represent perfect sight. It represent perfect sight. So what God is saying, I, I'm going to pitch you underneath a prophet that has perfect sight. They see things the way I see it. They, they see it from my point of view. They see it from my lens. They, and saints, when you are God's friends, you see it from his lens. You take a note, write that down. When you are one of God's friends, you only see it from his lens. You only see it from his lens. You, you don't see it from uh, a deceiver's realm. You don't see it from uh, a man's realm. You don't see it from a woman's realm. You see it from the realm of the Holy Spirit. And so, saints, um, a lot of times you have people in your life that, that act like, oh, I want God, I need God. But then you see them and, and, and they don't have no pursuit of him. They don't have no desire for him. They just live reckless lives. 
But you find yourself as a believer, you may be pitying them all the time and you may be always encouraging, always calling them, maybe on the phone with them, always talking to them and saying, no, don't kill yourself. No, don't do this. But then you realize that the person is playing around with you. But listen, your spirit knows it. But your soul, because it's, it's still affectionate, it, it will say, no, no, I got to win them. If I don't win them, nobody else will. But sometimes you are the issue why they won't repent. Oh, Jesus. Saints, I'm going to give you another point of view. I'm dealing with something deep tonight. And, and then we'll get off of here. Sometimes you are the reason why people won't get saved. While you're trying to save them. Because what happens is. There's a realm of deception. That a person can walk in in themselves. When they see one of Jesus's friends. Pitying them. And so they'll still go to the club. And because you said I'm praying for you. They'll say because they're praying for me. I'm not going to get shot. I'm not going to get shot while I'm at the club or, or I, I'm, I'm going to start doing stuff that I know is illegal. And because they're on my side, I know ain't nothing going to happen to me because they told me God got a plan for my life. So I know nothing going to happen to me. That's dangerous because now you have become the scapegoat and God cannot get across to them because as long as they see you, in that place of pity in them, they have a perception of God. And, and God, saints, I want you to hear me. God loves us, but he don't play around. <laughs> he, don't, he don't play around with foolishness. And, and his mercy it is, a, is a beautiful side of him. And he knows when it's being taken advantage of. You taking us, write this down. Some have the knowledge of God. Uh, some don't have the knowledge of God and want to change. Some do not have the knowledge of God. Uh, so, so some don't have the knowledge of God and they want to change. Some do not. How, how God gave this to me? Uh, God gave me a statement. Some have the knowledge of God, but don't want to change. Some want to change but don't have the knowledge of God if you take a note write that down some have the knowledge of God but don't want to change some want to change but don't have the knowledge of God so there's a difference somebody can have the knowledge of God And then not want to change. And someone can want to change but not have the knowledge of God. Who is God leaning towards? He's leaning towards and he's pitying those that don't have the knowledge of God but they really want to change. They just need someone to plant the seed. They need someone to, to reveal to them. They need someone to expose to them and show them, hey, this is what the Lord is saying. This is your 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 mission. You got to get out from amongst these people. This 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 place, this area, this group, this organization, this There was a place that happened to Apostle Paul. There there there, there was a place that happened to Apostle Paul. And saints, let me just say this. I don't want no counselors on here. Okay? I, 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 I want to get that clear. I don't want no nobody counseling nobody while the word, word going forth. This is why Apostle Paul was saying people got to stay silent. If anybody come on this line, there's enough anointing. No, Keisha, you good. Keisha, you good. You, you, can, you, you, you flowing with me. You fine. I'm talking about everybody else. <laughs> Keisha, you good. You flowing with me. You on you on one accord with me. You one with me. But I, I don't want nobody counseling nobody. Because saints, there's enough anointing on here. If people want Jesus, they can receive him. And you, you know how we roll. 
and 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 people trying to distract they sent as as distractions there's enough anointing on here if you really want to change you can change uh no nobody going to counsel you uh, i'm just going to be real raw in 2018 if you want to be saved you can be saved jesus is here yeah. you ain't got to up there get nobody to pity with you okay uh you're a distraction all right while i'm preaching the word i don't want i don't want you coming on my line and up there asking other people questions. No, I'm the teacher. And I don't want my flock getting distracted. I'm feeding something to their spirit. If you can't receive it, then, then you're just going to have to move on. If, if you can't receive this word and, and it's not doing nothing for you, then just go your way. Because this word is, is impactful. If you really got a heart to change, what I'm saying, you will change. There's, there's such a strong anointing on what I'm saying because I heard it from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you really want life, he said, the words I speak to you are spirit and life. This is enough, strong enough word for you to receive. And saints, I, I, you know, you know how we roll. Y'all got my same spirit. You turned up too. <laughs> I'm just quickening you to let you know. Because saints, a lot of times people come and they, they up there, they asking you all this stuff and it's, it's distracting. It's distracting you. You can't even receive no more because you, you're done lost in that situation. And they have help. Because a man of God is speaking. They have help. But what they're not receiving the help while they're taking away yours. Because ain't nobody up in JHM depressed. You're not suicidal. You ain't struggling with squat. You might, you might think that you are. You ain't struggling with squat. There's a special anointing on your life. You, you empowered by the spirit. So, so you're not going back there with nobody. <laughs> they, they're not going to have you operating in no, no, no pity party spirit. No, no. Get saved. Get delivered. <laughs> Saints, you got to understand, I, I be seeing so many things while I'm going for. <laughs> Saints, I, I told somebody one time, I don't hear words, I just hear hearts. I don't hear words, I just hear hearts. So, so I, if, if two people say I praise God, praise God, praise God, I don't, I don't hear praise God. I hear, oh, I'm just praising because everybody watching me. So, it's just a higher level that God is bringing us all into. Now, saints, I, I, I might have rebuked some. <laughs> Listen, I ain't mad at nobody. But what I'm serious about you getting this work, I ain't going to be on here too long. And I really don't like people watching replays. Because I think that replays, though, is powerful. It, it's something about fresh food. You see what I'm saying? You can go warm that thing up and the in the in the in the uh the cornbread can still be on point. Uh everything can still be on point. But it's something about when it's just served to you and, and, and you ain't gotta warm it up again. So I'm like I'm like I I got a certain span of time. I just want you to get it and then watch the replay to meditate on what you got instead of watching the replay to get it. Then you got to watch another replay to meditate on what you got. I'd rather you get it than meditate on what you got on the replay. All right. I done cussed some of y'all out. Listen, I love you. <laughs> Trick love the kids. Listen, I'm, I, listen, I just wanted to say it like that. Just a little jokey joke. Let me stop playing around before Trick Daddy's spirit take it to my house. All right, listen. But listen, watch out. And so saints, <laughs> what, what, what took place? Now, we deal with grieving, not the Holy Spirit. Remember, you're not just being protected by God. You're protecting God. You're not just being preserved by God. You're preserving God. Why? Because he's inside of you. What you receive in your spirit 
that's what God receives also. What you hear is what God is hearing. Sometimes you can expose God to things that he don't want to be exposed to. Because he inside of you. That's what conviction is. God don't want to smoke that cigarette. You want to smoke, smoke that cigarette. <laughs> so what happened is you smoking that cigarette and it's not really it's not really what God wants so you grieving him because you smoking and he inside of you so so you taking him to go smoke how many times God had to inhale secondhand smoke from you meaning like you and watch let me deal with the smoke the smoke may be anger you might get angry at somebody and, and that's the smoke that's in you. That you, it's, it's fuel in you. It's, it's you smoking. You're mad. You're bitter. Now, this is what you're feeding the spirit of God inside of you. No, he want to eat the word. He want to eat his word. He want to eat praise. He, he Think about that, saints. He want to eat humility. He want to eat thankfulness. He want to eat unity. He want to eat purity. He want to eat joy and peace and love and patience. And But you anxious. Imagine that, saints. When you anxious, you're feeding God what he does not want in his system. Because he inside of you. The Bible said you've been made one with the Holy Spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So imagine that, saints, when you get joined to the Lord, you become one spirit. So whatever you're letting into your spirit is also being let into the spirit of God. Wow. No wonder he gets grieved. Uh, saints, now you understand Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. Now you imagine why he gets grieved. He gets grieved. Because what's going on? He realizes that, hey, I'm hearing you engage in stuff that I don't want to engage in. I don't want to be friends with this young lady, but this your BFF. Then she coming over to your house and she telling you all this type of stuff. And I got to listen to that bull crap. And I'm trying to tell you, get away from this girl. She ain't say, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Uh, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And, 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 and you, you, you trying to serve God and you got a witch. And every time you get in worse and worse. Why? Because your spirit is bearing witness with you. That listen, that there's something. And, and, and you, you know them type of people that when you say something to them. When you speak something to them that's of God and they shut you down and you feel that quenching in the spirit. How many of y'all ever felt that? Like, I mean, you, you ever said something that the Lord said to you and it was something powerful and, and it affected you. It was strong in your spirit. You rejoiced over it. Then you shared it with somebody and they just crushed it. And you felt that interruption. Like, like the anointing just lifted off of what you, what you knew before and what you felt before. It's like you just died real quick. Like, like you just got shot. And you didn't even have time to react. You're like, man. And, and, and then you carry on with the conversation, but in your heart, you're like, what just happened to me? You just got hit with witchcraft. And that feeling, it lingers. And you try to focus and act like nothing happened. And you're like, girl, uh, uh, what you ate today? How you doing, bro? Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, like, yeah, man. You you still playing ball today? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah you gonna be at you gonna you gonna be at the crib uh, next week? And in your heart, you dying, cause Satan just daggered you when you really got the dagger. 
Satan just sorted you when you got this double-edged sword. Jesus. My God. Here you got the double-edged sword, but you got you 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 there was a sword that hit you that you wasn't ready for. Because you don't put the Holy Spirit in a predicament where he didn't lead you into. My God. Saints, I hope you hear me on this line. Imagine that. You done put the Holy Spirit in a predicament that he didn't lead you into. Meaning he, he didn't he didn't put you in that predicament. He didn't say go over there. He didn't he didn't send you there. He didn't have you in that conversation. But now you gave availability. To one of the devil's children. And all the devil's children can do is wound you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Saints I feel the anointing. All, 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 all the devil's children can do is wound you. Saints I feel the anointing. Let me just turn the music off. God feel the anointing. I feel turned up now. Listen. All, all, all demon children can do. Because saints you got to understand. We are not all children of God. This is the biggest lie. That you hear all over people. Religious people. We all God's children. That's a doggone lie. The only people that are the children of God are those that are led by the Spirit. When you are led by the Spirit, that's what makes you a child of God. If you are not saved, you are not God's child. Neither are your children. If you have children, these are not God's children. This is why we have such an issue all across the world with hunger. And then saints, people start blaming God and saying God is not feeding his children. No, these are not God's children. These are the children of wicked men that entered into woman and had sex with the woman, just like in the book of Genesis, where it said the sons of God, which were demon spirits, came down into the daughters of men and had sex with them. And we see in Genesis that it produced giants. Oh my God. Saints, I want you to hear me in the spirit. Now the giants that are being produced, they might not be nine foot tall, though we see Shaq. They might not be nine foot tall, though we see them basketball players. Listen, hold me down, wipe me down. But then we see that the new giants is pride. Oh my God, saints, I want you to hear me in the spirit. I see my angel Arrhenius speaking to me. Oh my God, I've seen my angel Arrhenius. Now saints, is about to get turned up. Now watch what begin to happen. Now the new giants that's being produced by the woman are, 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 are the giants of pride. Here's what I mean. There are children that are raised up. With this self-entitlement, this rebellion, this disorder, this uh, talking back, this uh, 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 this uh, chip on their shoulder. They think ain't nobody can touch them. They don't even respond to the cops. That's why the cops be whooping them sometimes. Because if you study some of the situation, not all, you know that there's injustice that go on. Me and you both know that, that there's racism go on and all type of stuff go on. But if you notice sometimes that it's actually the child. That is very defiant. And then when they come up against authority, they do the same thing to authority and the authority respond to them differently. The authority does not submit uh, uh, su submit to them like their parent. Did. The, 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 the authority might knock them out. The authority might do something else to them. But as a result, that stuff be a fruit of their pride, their disobedience. The Goliath, the new Goliath is pride. Because watch this here, saints. If you take a note, write this down. When you are proud, you are Goliath in the spirit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. When you are proud, you are a Goliath in the spirit realm. This is why you start even blocking other children of God from their blessings. Saints, you become a voice of satanic choice to other believers. Now, you, you, not only are you being misled, but, but you misled, mislead other people because your pride has positioned you into the wrong realm. My God. Saints, there's a difference between pride and power. Oh, saints. Oh, oh, saints. Oh, saints. When, when, when you deal with pride, it's the exaltation of self. 
but 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 when you deal with power is the exaltation of God. Uh, when, when you deal with pride is where you pit yourself before others. But when you deal with power is where you pit others before yourself. Oh, Jesus. So so what, what begins to happen is when you step into power. See, 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 saints, the whole generation of leaders was moving in pride. We see that in Mark. We see that in John. We see that in Matthew. We see that in Luke. All of those Pharisees was moving in pride. They had the pride of life. They, they were wicked. They didn't have no type of anointing, but they still was judgmental. They still was critical. They still always talked about people. They always tried to make people feel like they was lesser in value. This is why Jesus spoke to the leaders and said, when they told him to crucify that girl and said that she'd been caught in the act of adultery, Remember what Jesus said. He didn't even agree to Moses' law. My God, I want you to catch me in the spirit. This is real powerful. He didn't even agree with the law of Moses. He didn't even agree with the word of God. Oh, Jesus. I said he didn't even agree with the word of God. What he did was he said, no, no, because you got sin in your life and, and you want this person to be crucified let him that hath no sin, let them fulfill this word now. Let, let's see who's going to throw the stone out. Let's see who's going to fulfill the law of Moses to stone her. Because you haven't been fulfilling the law of Moses of walking in love. You want to fulfill the law of Moses to crucify her. But you haven't fulfilled the law of Moses to be the most humblest man in all the earth. The book of Numbers in the book the, in the Bible begin to declare about Moses. You, you want to fulfill the law of Moses to knock people down. But you don't want to fulfill the law of Moses to be crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live and to go upon a mountain and seek God and go 40 days fasting and always praying for other people to come up, always praying for other people to live good lives. See, saints, a lot of people can't be a prophet in our generation. Why? We got too many witches in our generation. Why? Because they can call your name, but they can't love your name. Oh my God. Saints, some of y'all gonna catch me in the spirit. They can call your address, but they don't love your address. They don't they don't want to see you prosper for real, for real. They, they don't want to see you blessed for real, for real. They, they, they don't want to see you married for real, for real. Because when you get married, they be the same one trying to curse your marriage. When you get that house, they be the same one telling you all type of stuff for you to lose it. When you get that new job, they be the same one plotting, hoping that you'll get fired. Since I come to tell you underneath the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God not moved by people that he gave gifts to. God is moved by people that's becoming a gift to others. He not moved by people that's carrying the gift of God. He moved by people People that have become the gift of God to other people. Saints, if you're on this line, shout glory. If you're on this line, shout glory. Because saints, what begins to happen, Jesus is beginning to move through a lot of young women, older women, young men, older men that have pure hearts and people overlook you. Why? Because you can't do what everybody else can do. But your heart is pure. You have a heart of submission. You have a heart of attentiveness. You have a heart of patience. You have a heart of humility. And that's what God is looking for. See, God ain't looking for all that other stuff. He not looking for all this parade and all this clownism, all this niggerism, all this, uh, you heard what I said, niggerism. He not, he not, he not worried about all that stuff. He worried about, can you love your brother like you love yourself? Can you love your neighbor like you love yourself? If you can't fulfill this law, I don't want to hear no law of prophecy. I don't want to hear no law of miracles. I don't want to hear no law of prosperity. I don't want to hear no law of deliverance. I don't want to hear no law of marriage. If you can't fulfill this one law, you miss. And since we got a generation of people that's missing, they think ministry is about a large crowd. They think ministry is about a lot of followers. They think ministry is about being famous. They think ministry is about becoming rich. They don't know that ministry is a test. It's the Holy Spirit looking at you and seeing if you care about people more than yourself. Will you go without food for other people to eat? Will you go without drink for everybody not to be thirsty? Would you go and pitch yourself in harm's way for everybody else to be protected. Will you go without help 
so that everybody will be supported. The key of ministry. So saints, what happened? We got all these teaching about laws. But saints, I want you to hear me. The way that you deepen the prophetic anointing on your life is by walking in love. There's no other way for you to deepen the prophetic anointing until you become a lover, a lover of Jesus, a lover of souls, a lover of the Bible, a lover of the voice of the spirit, a lover of unity, a lover of peace. The Bible say, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall see God. They shall be called, be called sons of God rather. Notice that the Bible said that you're not a son of God until you're a peacemaker. But we got all these people call themselves prophets and all this different stuff. And all they do is war with other people. These are witches. Witches. I know because the Holy Spirit took me last night. I went in a spiritual chariot They took me to a camp. And I saw some people that I knew. And I wondered, how do I see your face up in here? How, how, how do I see your face? Is this the same face? Your, your face not supposed to be up in here. But, but, but what the Holy Spirit was showing me, you, 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 you don't, you, you, unless I show you. That says what went down. I went in there and I decapitated all them nigger demons. All them evil spirits that I saw gathering, plotting. And saints, you, you know what I saw? I saw they was plotting against Prophet Joshua Holmes with their broke cell. Now, saints, I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. You know why the Lord took me there? You know why he let me see? Because he let me see, son, these are people that you, you, you have blessed. You helped them. You, you did the same thing that I did. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 said, Jesus went around doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. But you forget, the Bible said he went around doing good. Oh, my God. So, saints, I'm going to shock you. When the Bible said that he went go heal the sick and he went go do all the other stuff, that was other stuff. But the good was he fed them. My God. The good was he gave them a place to stay. The good was he released prosperity. Saints, the good was dealing with prosperity and provision, meaning when it said he went around doing good, it meant that wasn't dealing with healing. That wasn't dealing with, with uh, praying and casting out devils. He went around doing good, meaning he fed them when they was hungry. He gave them water when they had nothing to drink. He gave them shelter when they have nothing or nowhere to live. See, saints, this is the good that Jesus was doing. See, it was separating the scripture. If you get a chance, read it. It said how God anointed Jesus in, in, with, with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went around doing good. Then it said healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. This was another segment. That, that wasn't just included in the good. The good was another category. It, the good represented a place where he was providing. He fed uh, uh, all those people at the five loaves and two fish. We see, we see that the first thing that Jesus did when he healed that girl, he tell a, tell a kumai. You know, I thought about if I if 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 I had a daughter, I'd name her Telekuma, but then I don't want to sound like a, you know I'm from uh, uh, the Congo. Uh, never mind. Uh, <coughs> but I thought, I I, you know I I. You know, but listen, that's just between me and God. Listen, not now it done left between me and God, now between me and you. But listen, we'll be all right. I I just I just I just tell a kuma, What you want from me now? When, when, when he went around doing good, the good was when he went, go tell that girl, she, she was really dead. Jesus said she was sleeping. So she was really sleeping. We said, we, we agree with Jesus. Now, when she rises up from her sleep, Jesus tells them, give this girl something to eat. My God, I want you to catch me saints. When this girl rises from the dead. The first thing that Jesus told her that she must do is eat. See, saints, I want you to hear me. Some of you all have been dead spiritually. And when God delivers you from a wrong relationship, God delivers you from a wrong situation, you still not eating. So what, what begins to happen? You find yourself going back to the same situation because you haven't ate. Oh, my God. Saints, I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. 
Judas had gotten delivered from being an ordinary person. He got delivered. He was delivered because Jesus included him in the discipleship. Now, saints, I want you to hear me. If he, did, and I'm gonna shock some of y'all. He may not have gotten delivered spiritually because the Bible said that Jesus knew that he had a devil. Oh my God. But he got delivered financially. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. He got delivered from people that didn't have pure love towards him because Jesus was purely loving Judas. Wow. So, so, so he did experience deliverance. So, so he was delivered. He, he wasn't delivered from that devil on the inside of him, but he was de delivered atmospherically. If that's a word, if it's not a word, just, uh, just listen. It's in, it's not, it might not be in the Webster where you get webbed up, but it's in the prophet's dictionary. So, so he got delivered atmospherically. He got delivered in his location. He was no longer in the same location. He got delivered in his friendships. We see that Judas now, he was a disciple of Jesus. Okay, so now he was in a, a, a place where he was supposed to be Jesus' friend. It's just that he didn't fulfill the mission too well, but that was his place. Now, saints, so he did get delivered. Not the fullness, but he got delivered. Watch this, saints. As a result of him getting delivered, he's experiencing the good that Jesus did for him. Because saints, remember, he didn't receive healing because he had that devil. He didn't receive being de uh, delivered from the oppression of the devil because now I watch what I'm doing. I'm jumping from Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power and how he went around doing good. That's a segment. Healing all that was oppressed to the devil. That's a segment. Delivering those, uh, healing, healing, healing the sick and delivering those that were oppressed to the devil. So I'm dealing with these categories. Judas did not experience those other categories. He didn't get delivered from the oppression of the devil. He didn't get delivered from sickness. He got delivered in the realm of goodness. Why? Because God, Jesus was there to deliver him from evil situations, evil uh, things happening to him. He was in the presence of Jesus now. Now he got to experience good. He was the money carrier. How many of y'all know when you got money, you can experience good? I say something that people will be acting like broken spiritual. How are you going to be broken spiritual? You can't buy yourself a cheeseburger. Everybody tells them they're going to get them a cheeseburger and you can't even get you a cheeseburger. Now, saints, that was the cheeseburgers. They was healthy. Now, the cheeseburgers, it better be God. I done heard everything about cheeseburgers. They done said, listen, cheeseburger got, listen, they got, they got swine flu in that mug. They got, uh, 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 they got pork in that mug. Listen, they got all type of stuff in, in the cheeseburger. Now, even though, listen, they even got toenails in that mug. I don't even know what happened to cheeseburgers. Say, now you scared to eat a cheeseburger. You might choke on something. I said, I, I says, I went go order a cheeseburger about a couple weeks ago and I got the cheeseburger I'm about to take. I said, ah, never mind. <laughs> Cause, cause saints, I, I saw, I saw everything that I done heard about the thing. Saints, I went go eat the cheese, but I said, ah, that saints. I put the thing down real quick. Saints, I ain't, saints, I ain't even know what to do. Saints, I tried it. I tried it, saints. I tried to do everything in my power to eat that thing. I said, let me eat this cheeseburger right here. Ah, no, so saints, and people they act like you know if you you broke you all spiritual. They say you hear people talk to you like that, like like like, like, like if you if you broke, you more anointed. No, you broke. You just you just gonna be a uh, uh, struggling. You you know if if you be broke, it's just you gonna have bad hair days every day. You remember when Gina when when Gina was uh when her hair got stuck in that board? How many y'all saw that? <laughs> How many y'all saw that, Saints? You remember her head got stuck in that board? Saints, how many of y'all saw that episode where her head got stuck in that board? And she went to work and her hair looking all bad. And she was up there, you know, she up in that place up there acting like ain't nobody can see that her head stuck in that board. Now, Saints, what, what was going on? Saints, and now this is what happened when the devil put a yoke around you. 
You walking around looking all crazy and the demons laughing at you and the angels trying to bless you and God sending a prophet to you and trying to give you instructions and tell you what to do. And up there, stop acting like you up there want to wear this old weave all the days of your life with your hair looking like it's an afro. And you up there talking about you natural. But God trying to give you some extensions and raise you to another level. And saints, you know what I'm saying? Then, 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 then they begin all mad. But the Lord trying to be a blessing to you. What if your your uh, what if your man of God is asking for a son that he uh, you know son son that 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 got some uh uh uh, uh got some got some uh, what they call that thing hang time? <laughs> what you said? <laughs> huh? What what if your husband? What what if your husband is is, is is saying Lord just send me somebody with hang time and God said listen I'm about to send this one right here. I'm about to send this one right here. You don't even know. You up there, you up there thirsty. You don't know why you feel so thirsty. And you don't know about God about to bless you real good, huh? You don't, you don't even know that. Now watch this here. You, you don't even know why all of a sudden you, you got feelings in your legs again. Your toes, your toes can move all of a sudden. You know, the other days you had elephant feet. But now you feel circulation. <laughs> you feel circulation starting to move back. Into your your ligaments. Now watch what watch what's going on. What 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 God trying to position you, and you up there talking. Now nah, I ain't gonna put this thing in my head. I ain't, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna move with this thing. I'm just gonna leave it alone. And, and 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 God God trying to link you and God trying to whisper in your ear and say, girl, listen, I want you to do right. I want you to do this and this. And I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna bless you real good. And you up there all stubborn. Nah, I'm just okay. I'm satisfied with God got me. And then. Everything that God was going to do, he was going to hook you up with, 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 the, with the man that you're looking for, the stallion. <laughs> now, now, say, listen, say, listen, I'm going to tell you like this. A good man is hard to find. I don't care what nobody say. A good man is hard to find. I know people say a good woman, <laughs> but a good man is hard to find. No, no, say, say you, you, listen, you weigh it out. You wait out. A good man is hard to find. All right. So, 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 so listen, what I'm saying, <laughs> you got to be on point and ready and not be in your own zone because you don't know what God is linking you to. Saints, if you take a note, write this down. Every, <laughs> listen, every, every, every <laughs> instruction God is giving you is to link you to something that you really passionately desire. No, because saints, I was prophesying to somebody one time and they try to be all super spiritual. And, and they were talking, I just want a man that's up there. I hope that he's just a leader. I just want him to lead me. That's all I want. I don't want nothing else. And, 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 and one now, I said, girl, listen, the Lord told me to tell you that he's going to bless you with someone sexually. And 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 he won't satisfy your sexual desires, and 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 saints, and people don't really expect they they they, they, don't, they don't really expect for for you to 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 get to the nitty gritty, because saints, what happened is, I don't know why people get shamed about something that God ordained. Hmm. Dang. Dang. That, that, that. Why, why get ashamed of something that God ordained? And one of the daughters just said, wet. Listen, that that word is illegal. <laughs> That's like I'm, playing. I'm joking around. Everybody share this broadcast. Invite your followers. <laughs> Everybody share this broadcast. Invite your followers. As a matter of fact, don't invite your followers. I don't want nobody from the, from from the Israel gang. The Israel gang. Never mind. Don't don't share. No, I'm saying don't. Everybody, don't share. Don't don't share. Never mind. I, I'm all right. <laughs> I forgot. I don't want no pilgrimage. <laughs> I don't want no pilgrimage. <laughs> all right. No. <laughs> I don't want no. I don't want a pilgrimage. <laughs> I, 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 I hopple. All right. Now, watch this here, saints. 
Why be ashamed about something that God ordained? If he ordained sex, what's so shameful about it? What's so shameful about sex? Sex is a beautiful thing. And saints, watch this here. A lot of times you find yourself sinning against God. <laughs> saints, I feel the anointing. The glory cloud might fall tonight. I feel the anointing. Uh, <laughs> we don't want no looney tunes. Now, a lot of times you are broken about things because you never confronted it. So saying some people are broken sexually because you never confronted, uh, you never confronted the, the purity of God's idea about sex. And, um, you know, I, maybe I'm a, maybe I do it. You know, those of you on prophetic partakers, I talk to you about, um, some things that will, that God permits with sex. Okay. What God permits with sex, you know, I, I'll talk to you about what you can do with your partner. Because some people think that it's just, you know, listen, I'll talk to you in private. Why? Because y'all carry my spirit because you honor me. <laughs> I talk I talk to other folks. Other folks, they don't recognize nothing. They, they just, they just, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I, 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 I'm, I, I'm going to talk to you because I want you to understand the vastness, the the vastness of God. <laughs> Bow down and word. Now, saints, <laughs> I'm, I, I, I want to deal with the vastness of God. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I want to deal with that so everybody can understand the flow of the Spirit. When God permits and he gives you the, the, the right. Now, listen, if you're not up there, if God hasn't given you a, a, a man or, or a woman yet, don't have sex with people. Then you're going to end up sinning. You in a pure place with God. Don't end up... What you got to understand is God hasn't sent nobody yet. He hasn't sent nobody yet. So if he ain't sent nobody yet, what happens is you, you just in a place where you, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to miss. Now saints, if you, if you weigh this out, most of you women and men, you meet ungodly women or you meet ungodly men. So you know, they're not the one. Huh? That, that, you, you ain't got, they're not no hard for you. You, you real prophetic enough. You already know. You you already know. You know they're not the one. Uh, and, and if he getting inside, he, he ain't saved. So so he got about other fit. You know. He he got he got he got uh fifty other window wipers. <laughs> That's all we can say about it. <laughs> Saints, they said they said Wilt we'll change. They said, I was shocked. They said a basketball player, I don't know if it was Wilt or somebody. I was shocked. They said that he went with like a hundred women. I was like, listen, man. That, that, man, that, that's, that's body abuse. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, listen. That says, why, why, why does the church get scared to talk about, why, why religious people get scared to talk about two things? <laughs> they're scared to talk about sex. They're scared to talk about money. And these things have been, uh, it has been held back for so long from people that God wants them to know the mystery of the goodness of God for their life. Huh? Is is such a, now let me just say this. If you are a woman and you find yourself feeling sexual, it's not bad. Is not bad at all. If you're a man and you find yourself 
feeling sexual is not bad at all. But what God is letting you know that I'm coming to satisfy the desire. This is, listen, I want you to hear me very clearly. This is some deep stuff. The same way when the anointing is coming upon you, you begin to feel the atmosphere of change. You feel the atmosphere of frustration. You feel the atmosphere of I can't stay at the same level. You feel the atmosphere of something has to change for me. The same way God will let your body sense signals. Now, here's the crazy thing. If you're not in the word, if you're not in prayer, if you're not focused on Jesus, what happened is Satan can link you to a bimbo. And because you are already in that zone of feeling, you notice that the only thing that the person comes into your life is to... Uh, you know, somebody on this line, they couldn't spell. I wish I could help. I wish I, I can have them spell for me. They, they say F-A-C, uh, 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 like fact. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> now, <laughs> stop making me laugh. Stop making me laugh. Then my broadcast. Now, all they come into your life is to wipe you down. That's all they come into your life to do, to wipe you down. Now, what are they wiping you down from? The oil of the spirit. What are they wiping you down from? Uh, from being uh, drenched in the word of God. They're wiping you down in uh, that supernatural place. The, the, the supernatural place uh, that you've been in. And it's detrimental. But you notice that Satan will only send a man that that's his only functionality in your life. It's nothing else. It's just, girl, what, what, you went to Victoria's Secrets? That's all. <laughs> it's nothing else. Now, when you hungry, you're going to be hungry <laughs> until you don't want to be hungry. They ain't going to buy you nothing. Uh, if, if, if you ain't got no place to live, you're going to have no place to live. If, 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 if you don't know how, how, how you're going to get out of a situation, you're going to stay right there and not know how to get out of a situation. What I'm telling you is those feelings that you feel are normal. You are a person that God created. You were created to love. There's a passion inside of everyone to love somebody else. There's a passion in everybody to love. There's a passion in everybody to be loved. Most broken people are people that always love but don't receive. Most broken people are people that have perfected the release of love but have not enjoyed the receptivity of love. That's powerful stuff. I mean, most of you women are on here. Most of you men are on here. You have mastered the release of love but not the the receptivity of love so what goes on you you in the place where it's like you doing it and doing it and doing it well then wild things are happening to you and and listen there's nothing worse when you spend your whole life giving yourself away and <laughs> never receiving the measure of what you gave. Now, I realize most women are like this. I, I realize that. I realize that. I, I realize men are like this also. But I realize there's a large mass of women like this. Because women, there's a tendency that happens 
when women are virtuous. You can get hurt so many times that you don't even know how to receive what's not going to hurt you. I don't know who I was talking to. It was a deep discussion. I think I was talking to somebody. Something powerful I was saying. Oh! You know, saints, I'm starting to mentor a lot of uh, people. I'm, I'm excited about the young people in JHM. I, I'm starting to really mentor. And, and, and saints, I'm going to start mentoring some of you all personally. This is a beautiful thing. I raise up a lot of a lot of young people to to flow in the in the spirit of Jesus and just just and and it's like they so on fire for God. They're making the necessary things. Uh, Michelle, you know I got your I got you know Michelle. Do you know that I was dancing with your eagle? <laughs> Since y'all y'all wonder, some of y'all thought I was doing voodoo. No, I wasn't doing voodoo. I <laughs> that that uh, that that. That thing that I was holding in my hand, it, it was actually the, <laughs> the eagle. The eagle. The eagle was, was I was dancing with. <laughs> so that eagle was what I had in my hand. Saints, now y'all know. All right? <laughs> and, and Juan, I told you they was going to start talking about my cleavage. <laughs> Blessed be God. Listen, I might as well just cut my legs off. If I if I cut my legs off and I just preach with no legs, then then it, everything will be all right. <laughs> Blessed be God. <laughs> I feel the anointing. Saints, the Bible says Isaiah preached naked. So Isaiah was up there butt naked, just whoosh, just all of, now, now, was Isaiah wrong? Huh? The Bible said that he was naked, it's right there in the scripture, let me find that scripture. What did it say? Blessed be God. Listen. Shoot. You, saints, listen, some of you ladies out here, don't be scared to look sexy. Man of God, don't scare, don't don't be scared to look uh 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 don't be scared to look uh 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 sexy. You you know God created you to look good, to look nice. People want you to smell like a sweat hog and look like you came out the wilderness and always got some sad story. You a daughter of the king. How, listen, you know what a daughter of the king looked like? You know what a son of the king looked like? The Bible said that that woman wanted to go with Joseph because he was muscular. He he was sexy to her. She was like, I'm tired of Potiphar coming, <laughs> coming around the mountain when, and, and up there looking all like this here. She was she was still she was still hungry. <laughs> Say this in the Bible. Say remember? She was still hungry. She was, she, her husband went to work. She like, hey, Joseph, Joseph. Now, since what the Bible said that Joseph had to deny her for days. So, saints, this means that Joseph, what was going on? Joseph was up there. He was trying to say, girl, leave me alone. Stop. She was up there trying to fill on his chest. Like, girl, get off of the, the, the get, get off of this muscles. I went to the gym. This ain't for you. <laughs> You're not going to grab me. Then, then, then she tried to lure him in for days. That's what the Bible say. The Bible said he had to keep on telling her no. That woman was up there addicted to Joseph. And watch this here. She didn't even get to taste Joseph and she still was addicted. <laughs> that word addicted is prophetic. <laughs> some of, some of y'all don't still don't know what I'm talking about. 
and some of y'all they're singing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And you ain't catch what I said. Now what? <laughs> now what, what, what? Listen. Look what happened. This man looked so good to her. <laughs> she was willing to leave Potiphar for another pot. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> listen, she, <laughs> she, she was willing to say, listen, uh, what, what was going on? What, what, what was happening? The man of God looked nice. Now, he couldn't help. Listen, some of y'all, you up there want to dim down yourself because people talk about you. You can't help that you look nice. You can't help. You got to stop living for people. The people up there are going to be jealous of you. They like when you look like a sweat hog. They like when you got that bald head. They don't like when the Brazilian on fleet. They don't like when you got curly fries. They like you... When, 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 when you say yes, sir, like this here. Now, that's not for my son. My, my son, I told my son, you're not bald head. you blessed head. That's, 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 that's what I say. I'm talking about one of my sons. They, 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 I, I don't consider, you know, I, I, I consider, <laughs> no, I consider uh, 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 that word, that term, I, I consider it like a form of living a, a cursed hard life. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with your blessed. The favor of God is on you. So don't be up there living lesser than your means. And, and, and don't, don't up there try to uh, submit to what people think you should look like and, and, and jeopardize the favor of God that he want to show to you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Listen, you got to smell good. You got to look good. It says just one smell can keep somebody from going to hell. Just one smell. If you just learn to just keep yourself. Saints, do you know that your, your, your keeping of yourself will, will give testimony of Jesus even before uh, a lot of things that people be doing to try to win souls? Saints, people tell, uh, I've gone to places and people just like me just because, you know, I, I went to, I, I, I just happened to slip up in Walmart yesterday, yesterday, I believe. I slipped up in Walmart and, and it was a whole bunch of lovely uh, uh, Caucasian people. And, and their little sons, the little sons, they had sons. And as the Lord lived, his son, his dad started it. Now, his dad is a grown man. His dad, like, over 40, over 50. He a grown behind man. Look what he did. He went go speak to, uh, he went go, he went go speak to me, and he told me, uh, he said, I love, I love your shoes. Now, he's a grown man. Now, he's leading, he's leading his sons. Now, his sons, they, t then they, then they started, Talking to me like they looked at me like, OK, dad, since you cool with it, we've been thinking the same thing all along. And, and then then they came up to me. They said, we love your shoe. They said, what kind of shoes are that? And, and, and then now he got a wife. Now, now his wife come on the scene. And, and his wife up there, up there talking to me. So so what I told him, I said, I said, Jesus gave me them shoes. They said, well, well, Jesus got good taste. I said, yeah, Jesus gave me them shoes. You got to throw a little Jesus in there just, just, just real quick. Yeah, because they, they kept giving me compliments. I was inside I was inside Walmart. You know, they try to pitch you out of places when you talk about Jesus. So you you got you got you got you got you got to say the name. You got you gotta know how to do it. And sometimes they, you know, people up there be trying to be dusty, trying to trying to stop you you gotta know how to maneuver around that thing just just sneak it in just move it in that's saying both both of them and their children heard about jesus and saints they didn't reject me either because they like they like my spirit they didn't sense no harm coming from me you know that saints i want you to hear me 
Your atmosphere will speak louder than your words. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I want somebody to write that down. Your, your, your atmosphere will speak louder than your words. So, so saints, somebody can come up to somebody and say, you know, God loves you. But if you got the atmosphere of hatred, people can sense that on you. If you got the atmosphere of jealousy, saints, have you ever seen somebody come up to you and say, you know, you know, uh, you know, they said something to you. You heard their words, but their atmosphere spoke louder. Oh, Jesus. There's some powerful stuff here. It tastes so good, make you want them. Now, now watch, watch what happened. They saying something to you with the word realm. But as a result, what's going on? There's a supernatural. There's a supernatural. Uh, what's going on? There's a supernatural detection in your spirit saying, well, you said this, but your atmosphere is resisting what you said. Ah. And since what she said, some of you all are saying things that your atmosphere is resisting. Oh, Jesus. Your atmosphere, you, you say you blessed, but your atmosphere is saying, I don't believe God. I don't know how I'm going to be blessed. You're, you're saying, I'm going to get married, but your atmosphere is saying, I don't know how God going to let somebody find me, and I'm not dating. Oh, Jesus, I'm prophesying to you. I am prophesying to you. You are saying that you're coming out of debt, but you're saying, who's going to pay these student loans? I owe over 20000 I don't know how I'm going to get this done. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to get this to come to pass. Now, saints, what's going on? I'm trying to look for my other. What's going on? You're speaking. But your atmosphere is, dis, is, 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 is in di disobedience to your words. Jesus. You, you talking... But your atmosphere is rebuking you and telling you, stop it. My God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Saints, the Bible said in Thessalonians, despise not prophesying. Why? What side of you despises prophecy? Your flesh. Oh, my God. I feel the anointing. Saints, you stay with me. Saints, I, I'm, 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 just, I'm just stepping into different waters. Once I get into this zone, we in there. We just get to the appetizer when we get in the zone, auto zone. <laughs> now watch this here. When you get into that place of despising prophecy, you can't do it in your spirit. You can only despise prophecy in your flesh. So what happens is when you're despising prophecy, it means that your flesh is combating. Your flesh, what, what's going on? Your flesh is combating with what you're saying. Your flesh is going against your prophecy. Your confession is going against Yo, yo, no, no, watch this here. I'm going to say this here. Demonic possession can go against your confession. If you take your notes, write that down. Oh, Jesus. 
Oh my God. Oh my God. Saints, I'm hearing God say that. I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain the verbiage. Demonic possession can go against your confession. And saints, watch this here. Demons can possess your thoughts temporarily. And while you're confessing temporarily, the demonic possession is opposing your confession. Because saints, if you stuck in a realm where God is not having you focus on, you're being possessed by that realm at that time. You may not be possessed forever because the Bible said to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Then the Bible also said that be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that means that there can be temporal possession. Oh, Jesus. Watch this here. This might not be your phone. But if you get this phone, my God, even though it belongs to me, it you have temporal possession of the phone. Now, I can say I possess the phone. Yeah, I possess the phone according to right. But you possess the phone according to tangibility. Oh, Jesus. This is, oh, my God. I feel this. I feel the anointing. Now, now, now watch, watch what's going on. I possess the phone according to authority and right. But you possess the phone according to tangibility. Uh, uh, you possess the phone according to accessibility. So, so what goes on is there's so many believers that, that yes, God possesses your mind. But because you're not diligent with your accessibility, my God. No wonder Proverbs chapter 4, 23 say, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. Why did it say guard your heart with all diligence? It said guard your heart because your heart is your phone, is your authority, is your garden, is your place where the Holy Spirit is living inside of your spirit man and what he's telling you to guard it because if you don't, even though it belongs to me, the devil can have accessibility to it and possess it for that time when he accesses it. Oh, Jesus. So, so the time that he accessed it, that's when he possessed it. Now, he may not be the possessor always. Because why? You might hear a word that brings you back into position. You might hear Prophet Joshua telling you, listen, don't go that way. Don't go that way. So what happened is I'm renewing your soul. I'm bringing you back into the place. But what happened was, according to accessibility, you was possessed. Oh, my God. Saints. Hmm. Mm. I'm not doing this off the dictionary. I'm just freestyling. You notice there's something called a penthouse. I know because I stayed in a penthouse. Now, notice that the pent was in the word house. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Notice that when you deal with a penthouse, pent is in the word house. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. When you deal with the word repent, what God is saying, you let somebody in your house. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He's saying you let somebody in your house. My God. Your house is your body. The Bible said that in Corinthians many times. Your body is your house. Your body is, is your dwelling place. That's why I say he that uh, 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 it's, it said, uh, it talked about the dwelling, God dwelling inside of you. Remember Jesus told you, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you'll bear much fruit. I think in John chapter 15, he, let, let's go there. John chapter 15. Look what, he, look what he was telling John chapter 15. I believe he said, I'm divine. You are the branches. He said, if you abide in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. So what was going on in the text? John chapter 15. Look what it say. It say, every, verse 2, every branch in me that bears not fruit is taken away. My God. No, no, saints, I want you to catch this here. If the Bible said that you are in him, and then the Bible says that everybody that does not bear fruit is taken away. Oh, Jesus. See, saints, I, I, that's, that's why it's so powerful. 
Because you're hearing the word of God be preached right now. What you're hearing stuff that you really probably saw, but you didn't really see. See, saints, you can, you, let me say it like this. You can saw it and never see it. Some people that read the Bible saw it. But you got to be prophetic to see it. My God. There's a lot of people that saw Jesus. Meaning they saw Jesus move through a man. They saw Jesus move through a ministry. They saw Jesus move through a prophet. But they never see Jesus. That's why they, they, they can get around the atmosphere of someone where Jesus is in. And they don't never catch it. Why? Because they saw him but they can't see him. Oh, Jesus. Saints, I want you to hear me. There are some sides of God. There are some sides of the word that you just saw. You never see. And, and your seeing, oh my God, your seeing will define if you let God come inside and change you and make you better as a woman, make you better as a man. If you saw it, if you saw it, You just in a place where it's just it's just in your knowledge. If you see it, it's in your revelation. If you take an oath, write that down. Oh my God, I love this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love this. Saints, I, listen. The same way if you playing basketball, you know you shooting. <laughs> the same way you you know when the stream you're there. Because saints, this 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 is something you need to catch. My God, my God, I I I, I want you to see it. 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 Saints, what was going on? We see. We see all through the text what was happening. There was people that saw Jesus, but couldn't see Jesus. They saw him walk in the streets, but they couldn't see that he was the son of God. Wow. Wow. They saw him healing the sick, but they couldn't see that he was the only begotten of the father. They saw that he that he that he was prophesying but they couldn't see that he was leading the new wave of the prophets they saw him walking in love but they couldn't see how they could love him back saints let me just say this when god calls you to walk as a woman or a man that's possessed with jesus you're going to experience a lot of rejection just know that you're going to experience a lot of heartbreak and heartache. Now, the world not going to receive you. But the world going to be addicted to you. Oh, my God. I hope you catch me. I hope you catch me. This is some real powerful prophetic stuff. The world will not receive you, but they will be addicted to you. So what's going to happen is. Toxic people are drawn to an untoxic God inside of you. Unclean people are gone, are, are, are drawn to a clean God inside of you. Unpowerful people are drawn to a powerful God inside of you, Christ Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the book of Colossians says. When you become prophetically anointed, your atmosphere is desired by those that want it expired. Oh my God, saints, I hope you catch me. I hope you catch me. I'm, I'm going to say this one more time. When you are a prophetic person, your atmosphere is desired by people that want it expired. 
Not everybody, and this is what you got to be careful, those of y'all on Facebook and social media. Don't share your dreams and visions with everybody and what you want to accomplish with everybody. Because some people, when they know the direction you're going, that's when they begin to fight you the most. That's when they begin to even speak evil to try to cancel you from certain things. They don't want you to reach. And you wonder sometimes, and sometimes you, you try, you try to, you try to, you, 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 listen, you can do things out of innocence. And sometimes those very things are targeted by people that have a knowledge of where you want to go, but have an assignment to stop you from getting there. I'm going to say this one more time. Be careful of people that have a knowledge where you want to go, but have an assignment to stop you from getting there. It's not in their heart for you to get there. They don't want you to accomplish. They don't want you to be successful. Listen, woman or guy, you think everybody wants you married? Some people love seeing you single. They love seeing you, 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 you. And, and watch this here. Let me, let me just say this. Most men and most women that really look nice, some of them be single. You know why? Because the devil always want to link you to somebody that's going to hurt you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And, and then watch here. You can get hurt so much that you're perverted in your thought concerning what God was going to do for you because now what God said is now being manipulated by what other people have done to you my God and, and it, it don't got nothing to do with people it, it, it just got to do everything with God and, and, and most of the people God didn't even say but what happened is now because the devil used it as a strategy so now your mind is messed up about the idea Listen, just because niggas can't handle marriage, don't, don't say you ain't going to get married. No, you're going to get married and be happy. Just because people don't know how, they don't know how to handle their children. No, you're going to have some children and be happy. Just because people don't know how to handle ministry, you're going to have a ministry and be happy. Just because people don't know how to handle money, you're going to have some money and be happy. Don't let that stuff stop you from moving in what God said because you evaluated what God is speaking based upon what you saw. But God trying to get you to see, my God, what you saw was the experience. You haven't seen the God that's over all things. That's going to give you not just an experience. He's going to give you the truth. He's going to give you the promise. He's going to give you the perfection. What did the Bible say? I'll perfect that which concerns you. I'll perfect that which concerns you. What was God saying? I know that people saw imperfection, but you're going to see perfection. I know people saw jacked upness, but you're going to see the goodness and the mercy of God following you. See, saints, what's going on? What does God do? He, he moves you into a realm where it's like he's saying, I'm not going to let you go through what other people went through. They went through all that stuff to get where they are. You're not going to have to go through all that stuff. I'm taking you down a path where you can laugh, where you can enjoy life. Saints, Satan comes to bruise you so that the Holy Spirit is, is not permitted to use you. If you take a note, write that down. Satan comes to bruise, bruise you so that the Holy Spirit is not permitted to use you. Why? Because when you get bruised, you not only shut down on people, you really shut down on God because God is connected to people. And, and everything that God is going to tell you to do is involving people. It's never going to be an isolated work. See, see, Jonah, he got fed up with people, so he shut down with God. Imagine this, saints. Jonah did not just tell the Lord, I'm not going to Nineveh. Why did Jonah say I'm not going to Nineveh? It was because of the people. So Jonah was tired of dealing with wicked people. 
So Jonah shut down on God as a result of him shutting down on people. People was connected to his rebellion against God. Always remember that. Don't let people paint a picture that God did not paint. And saints, stop letting people pitch you in a frame that's not a part of your picture. Sometimes the devil will pitch you in a frame and say, you're not, you're not going to reach this. It's too late for you. You got children now. You, you in debt now. You made the wrong move. No, no, no. If you remember one of the anointings of Jesus, it was for the recovery of sight to the blind. So what was the recovery of sight? Meaning God was going to restore your ability to see. Remember what I just said. A lot of people saw the word, but they can't see the word. They saw Jesus walking, but they couldn't see that he was the son of God. They saw that Potiphar was causing the house of Pot uh, uh, Joseph was causing the house of Potiphar to prosper, but they couldn't see that he was a prophet. The woman at Ze the woman the uh, the Shunammite woman, many people saw Elisha, but only the Shunammite woman was able to see Elisha. Imagine that, saints. Everybody saw him walking daily, but only she was able to see him walking daily. When you see, there's a supernatural realm. Now, saints, what, what, what goes on? Remember, the Bible keeps telling us to seek God. The first three words is see. So God was really saying, I don't just want you to do a bunch of religious stuff to try to get to me. I want you just, just to get focused on me so I can show you what to do to get there. See, says, I want you to hear me. Too many people are saying, I'm, I'm going after God. Listen, you don't know how to go after God. You just need to get focused on him and let him show you. If you take a note, write this. Focus is an inward GPS to locate where God is. You can't find him in yourself. But focus is an inward GPS to locate him. You don't know. You don't know how to seek God. But you do know how to see God. How do you see God? You make him your focus. When you make him in your focus, then he can lead you and show you the way. I, I want to show you something powerful. I feel the anointing so strong. Saints, I don't know if y'all feel this anointing. I feel the anointing. Now, now, watch this here. Watch this here. Now, watch what happened to the woman. We see, we see uh, Mary. She did not seek Jesus. All she did was see Jesus. As she was seeing Jesus at his feet. Jesus began to show her how to seek him. She had to see him first before she could seek him. Martha never took time to see Jesus. All she did was try to seek Jesus and she was wrong. What was going on? Jesus was asking for focus. Attentiveness will take you further in this life than your education. Always remember that. If you just pay attention, you'll purchase the wisdom of God. You got to pay. You got to pay the attention for you to purchase deliverance. You have to pay attention to purchase. It's an exchange. Mary was doing it. Martha wasn't doing it. Some of you all need to catch this in 2018. Learn to see Jesus. Before you try to seek him. Because you might end up like a lot of people. Doing all these works. And end up disappointed. Because God not responding to your works. But that's the same thing Cain did in the book of Genesis. 
He was doing everything that he thought was right instead of doing the thing that God said was right. Saints, can you imagine Cain was doing everything he thought right instead of what, what God was saying was right? And saints, he was such in this delusion that God speaks to him and he still doesn't do what God say. Because he already made up in my mind, this is how I'm going to seek you. But why? He refused to see. God is not asking you just to seek him. He's asking you to see him. After you see, then you can get to the K. The K represent king. See king. If you look at the word seeking is a compound word. See king. See king. See king. See king Jesus. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. All the glory. Oh yes, oh yes, of your presence, we your temple give you reverence, so rise. So rise, ooh. Ooh. those of you all here, saints, say, Jesus, I want to see you. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, oh, ooh. telling you saints this is so powerful this is so powerful jesus i want to see you this should be your prayer this year this should be your prayer this year saints your prayer should be jesus i want to see you and watch it let me give you a secret when jesus show up for some of you are he going to appear to you in the appearance of your husband when jesus show up He's going to appear to you in the appearance of your prophet. When Jesus show up, he's going to appear to you in the appearance of your Jesus connection. He's going to show up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ooh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Saints All Moses did is say Lord I want to see your glory G The Lord tells Moses I'm not going to let you see my face But I'm going to let you see my back Why? Because the Lord Jesus knew That that back was going to get crucified Watch this saints the Lord shows him the back of him, not his face. Because your face is your identity. What God was saying, before you can wear my identity in the earth, you got to be crucified with me. The Lord shows him the back because the Lord is saying, no, you got to be crucified first before you can officially wear my identity in the earth. Imagine that, saints. I'm hearing God say this. Saints. Then Moses prophesies about a prophet coming that's greater than him. And now we see the face of God through Jesus. There are some people that's going through a season where you're seeing his back. Because in 2018, you're about to see his face. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I feel the anointing, saints. I feel the anointing. You know, there's miracles happening on here. A lot of you all have been getting healed. 
there's an anointing. Receive your healing. Receive a fresh. All the glory. Oh, yes, yes. Of your presence. We your temple. Give you reverence. So rise. Ooh. Ooh. Saints. You're seeing his back, but you're going to see his face. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm. There's a special anointing, saints. There's a special anointing. There's a special anointing. Saints, the power of God is here just for you. A woman of God, man of God, there's a special anointing just for you. This is just for you, saints. And, 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 and don't let nothing stop you from just letting Jesus saturate you. Where you are, as you're watching me, let the Son of God use you as his woman this year. Use you as his man this year. There's enough people not serving God. Be, make yourself available. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, yes, yes. Say yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, saints, it's such a precious place. This is such a precious place. The Holy Spirit is doing something right now. There are angels going forth to fix matters in your life. Things, as I stand in the presence of God, things that you want the Lord to do for you, you're going to see everything start coming together, putting all the puzzles in place. Moving out of your life who's not supposed to be there. Moving into your life who's supposed to be there. Some of you are going to find that it's nobody right now. Like meaning in your personal inner circle. God going to have you to yourself. So that you can hear his voice. So that you can be focused. So that you can be successful. Don't fight this anointing. Don't fight the grace of God. Say, Jesus, I receive your plan for my life. Tell them, saints. Jesus, I receive your perfect will for me. Oh, we surrender, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Ooh. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Jesus, you're awesome. Oh, the glory, oh yes, yes, of your presence, mm. we your temple, oh yes. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person on this line that you will be in a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. 
a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Oh yes, oh yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. Mm. I'm praying for you, saints. Those of you on this line, there's about to be a wave of God's power as we are standing here on holy ground. There's a wave of God's power. Saints, I'm excited about these Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. I'm coming. I'll give you details very soon, saints. I'm going to give you time to plan in, a, in, a, in advance. But saints, if you was at the last meeting, the glory of the Holy Spirit that was so tangible is going to be too mighty. Saints, this zone Don't let nothing take it from you. This zone with the Holy Spirit. Saints, the power of God. The power of God. The power of God. The power of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I decree and I declare over you. I, I prophesy into your life. I speak into your life. I decree a supernatural anointing upon you. I decree supernatural grace upon your life right now in Jesus' mighty name. I prophesy into your life that every event that God wants to happen, it shall happen. Every person God wants out of your life shall be removed. Saints, remember, I said pray this prayer. Lord, remove who's wrong in my life. And only sin who's strong in my life. Pray that prayer, saints. Remove who's wrong in my life. And sin who's strong in my life. This is the time for it. I'm excited, saints. Glory. Glory, glory, oh yes, glory to the Lamb. Ooh, ooh. Glory, glory, oh yes, glory to the Lamb for you are glorious oh yes you're worthy to be praised you're the Lamb upon the throne and on to you we lift our voice in praise you're the lamb upon the throne I need the choir to sing this saints <laughs> for you are glorious And worthy to be praised, oh, you're the Lamb upon the throne, oh yes, unto you, oh. Love you, saints. We lift our voice in praise. You're the Lamb upon, oh yes, Jesus, you're the Lamb upon the throne, oh yes, yes, you're the Lamb upon. Isn't God so awesome, saints? We praise God, we're back on the air.
Oh yes, no dustiness, no dustiness. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. We thank you, Lord. No dustiness, yes. Not today, Satan. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Oh, we subdue you. Glory. Glory, oh yes, glory to the Lamb, glory, glory, oh yes, yes, glory to the Lamb, oh yes. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. Yes, you're the Lamb upon, upon the throne. Oh, yes, and unto you. We lift our voice in praise, oh, in the Lamb upon, oh yes. Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. You are glorious and worthy to be praised, yes. You're the Lamb. Upon, upon the throne, the throne, the throne, and unto you, oh, we lift our voice in praise, you're the Lamb, upon the throne. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. You're the Lamb upon Jesus. You're the Lamb upon the throne. Mm. You're the Lamb upon. Saints, worship. Let's worship. Let's worship. Let's worship. Let's worship, let's worship, let's worship as we're standing in the presence of God. Let's worship, let's worship, saints, before we get out of here. Let's worship, let's worship, let's worship, let's worship. The Bible said the Father seeketh those that will, uh, the true worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Huh? Let's worship. There's a special anointing tonight. God has done so many things for us. Those of you who are connected to me, I'm excited. Jesus has taken me to a place in the spirit. I'm seeing all type of visions. I haven't even finished the word of the Lord for 2018. I've seen so much stuff. Uh, it's, it's just a continuation. God is starting to take me all type of things just because of the level of assignment that we are in in these last days. I've seen Moses and Elijah. I'm going to tell you the vision of it. When I saw Moses and Elijah. There's so many things. That I've been seeing. So powerful. Moses and Elijah. I'm going to tell you the conversation I've heard. In the spirit realm. With, with Jesus. Since you got to understand. We're in a time where Jesus is getting everybody. Prepared for his coming. Not only the church, but angels. Yes, saints, it's going to be powerful. 
I told you my vision with Jeremiah. I saw Jeremiah. I'll continue that probably tomorrow. And when I saw him, he was weeping. I'm going to tell you what he said. I'll just tell you tomorrow. What he said. It was so powerful. What he said to me. So powerful. It's so powerful. How many, many y'all want me to tell you tonight before we go? Oh, yes. Those of you all that watch me all the time, I want you to become a partner of this prophetic ministry. I want you to start connecting this year with the anointing of my life. I want you to be able to be in the prophetic partakers. It's, for, it's a place where everybody that's so into the ministry, there's a lot of secret stuff that go on. Like I went into prophetic partakers and told everybody what was happening last night. I want, I want some of you all that watch to start really connecting with JHM. Your seed connects you to the anointing. The saints, we always talk about sowing, but when you sow money into the anointing, the glory of God, there's a difference that God begins to honor you. He begins to do things for you when you connect with the prophet of God. Then God or the prophet start prospering you. That's why the Lord linked us together. It's a supernatural exchange. I want you to be prayerful and really start sowing into this ministry. Those of you all that don't sow. Because there's personal mentor classes that I'm starting to do privately on Facebook. And I want you to be a part of the classes. I want you. I want you to be a part of it. I sincerely do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let our King be lifted up. Jesus be healed I command your sickness to go in Jesus name in Jesus name I decree your sickness to go in the name of Jesus let our king be lifted up oh yes we praise you Lord If you are a sower in the ministry, if you sow into JHM, please contact my personal assistant, April Horton, and contact her so that you can join the private page on Facebook. Saints, I'm not encouraging you to be on Facebook. Facebook is a very evil avenue, but the Lord just got me there because I'm a, I'm a Jeremiah in my generation. I'm, I'm pressing. I'm, 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 I'm pulling souls even though it's, it's heavy, it's hard, it's difficult. I'm still doing it for God's sake, but I myself, I, I know it's a wicked zone. So I'm not encouraging you to be on Facebook like scanning, but what I'm doing is I'm saying I have a private place there where you can see my face. I'll talk to you. I'm answering your questions. We right there is a private page for those of you all that invest, you pitch your money where your mouth is and you tell Jesus, listen, I want to honor you. I want to honor the man of God. I want to honor your work. The work where souls are being won. Where meetings are going on that are healing bodies, saving souls. That's where I'm doing a, a special thing. And I want you all to become a part. April Horton is there. Uh, 
Prophet is April, just make yourself known if you're on this line. Make yourself known so people can see you if you're on this line. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Let our king be lifted up. Oh, Zen. Hannah. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh yes. Bless you, daughter. Please get in contact with uh, Prophetess April. So there, there's the details right there. Snap, Snapchat or <laughs> snapshot or screenshot. Listen, bless be God. Somebody got shot. Somebody get the shot. Some of y'all never been shot. Just get that screenshot. Hosanna. Hosanna. Bless you, our saints. Everyone that's praying. Be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Oh, yes. Jesus, be lifted higher. Be lifted higher, higher, oh yes, yes, be lifted higher, be lifted higher, higher, oh yes. You're blessed, be lifted higher, be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher, oh yes, mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, every single person, I decree and I declare favor over them. I decree and I declare your goodness and mercy to follow them. Every satanic attack against their life, I cancel it as your prophet of God right now. As I stand in your presence, Holy Spirit, I ask that you grant every single person wisdom, understanding, that you will cause them to make decisions that please you, that their focus will be there, that their worship, their praise, their thanksgiving. Lord, cause their hearts to be more thankful because thanksgiving is the key to accessing you. Saints, I want you to write that down. Thanksgiving is the key to accessing Jesus. When you're thankful, you're the most humble. You're the most humble when you're thankful. Humble people do not thank God uh, uh, humble people always thank God and proud people never do. Let our king be lifted up. Oh yes. God measures your humility by your thanksgiving. Remember the Bible saying Thessalonians, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus that you give thanks. So, saints, if you don't even know the will of God for your life, if you thank God, you'll access his will for your life. Imagine that. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. If you learn how to give God thanks, if you learn how to thank Jesus, you can locate the direction that he wants you to take. So the prophetic is connected to thanksgiving, deepening the, the, the prophetic anointing. So thank him for everything. Praise him for everything. Bless his name for everything. Even if you're not where you want to be, say, Lord, thank you that I'm still alive. Thank you for breathing into me. Thank you. I got a body. I got a soul still. I still can get it right. Thank him. You'll find yourself entering into new waves of the blessing of God. 
This is the time for it. This is the time for it. If you learn how to thank God more, your discernment will be on point. You'll see a snake before they hiss. You'll see a Judas before they kiss. You'll see, you'll see disaster before it hits. Learn to give thanks more. Thanksgiving opens up your eyes to see in the spirit. Thanksgiving causes you to flow with Jesus, not against him, with him. Thanksgiving make you submit to God more. Thanksgiving make you become more sensitive to the spirit. Thanksgiving causes you to respect the anointing more. It causes you to honor the presence of God more. It causes you to believe a prophet. Thanksgiving will cause you to be in that place of accuracy with Jesus. This is the time for us, saints. You'll be accurate with God. Learn to thank him more. You are God alone. Oh yes, you are on the throne. Oh yes, you are God alone. Right now, in the good times and bad, you are on the throne. Oh yes, you are God alone. In the name of Jesus, I release a special anointing on this line. For those of you all, you're in a new place with Jesus. I prophesy into your life. Every good and perfect gift, blessing, everything that God has as an opportunity for you, you shall receive it right now in the name of Jesus. You shall receive it. Nothing shall be lost. Nothing shall be broken. Nothing shall be damaged. Some of you on this line is not too late. Your position may it be restored to you tonight. Or as you're watching, your position be restored to you. Whatever God said, re say it. Re say it. Whatever God said, re say it. Replay it. Don't just let it go down the drain. Saints, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is have God prophesy something to you and you don't prophesy it back to yourself. Saints, in the book of Isaiah, prophet Isaiah revealed, God said, pit me in remembrance. Saints, imagine that. He said, pit me in remembrance. What was God saying? Cause me to remember what I said to you. Cause me. I, I, I want to. I want you to to re speak to me. Re speak to me. That's what the power of God will cause you to move in a place where you prophesy what God prophesied to you. Speak what He said to you, and don't let your thoughts linger. If something excited you that God said, why don't you keep on saying it so that you can stay excited? Replay moments where you felt the anointing. That's why some of you all should rewatch this video. Rewatch videos where you see Prophet Joshua Holmes. You want to stay in the flow of experiencing the power of God. Every time you hear God speak to you, say it back to yourself. Every time you feel God, replay the video where God is moving. You always want to re-experience and build upon moments with Jesus. And saints, that's what I do. If I'm going to a, a service, if I'm at, at, at home, if I'm doing anything, I make sure I keep my mind stayed on things where I felt Jesus in. And once I get into that zone with him, here he comes. Your thoughts are doing two things. Is fighting Jesus or inviting Jesus? But saints, there's another realm in God where you don't just invite Jesus, but you ignite Jesus. When you ignite Jesus, it's now you in a place where you're not just welcoming him, but you're in a place where he, he's enjoying you. 
And saints, I'm going to say this. God loves everybody, but he does not enjoy everybody. God doesn't enjoy everybody. The enjoyment of God is connected to you being thankful, to you being humble, to you being lowly, to you being holy, and to just look at Jesus in all your situations and not look at your situations instead of Jesus. So let him enjoy you this year. Oh, yes. Let him enjoy you this year. Let him enjoy you this year. God want to enjoy you this year. Saints, bless everybody. Powerful broadcast coming up. I may y'all enjoy the word. Bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone, sweet sleep, the favor of God be upon you. <laughs> Bad boys for life. <laughs> I'm saying, I ain't worried about no witch, blessed be God. I got access to all their camps. Holy Ghost took me there. I ain't got no worries. Oh, yes, we love you, Jesus. For all you've done for me, oh yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Jesus. That ego life. I want all my sons and daughters to stop that ego life right now. Everybody. Ego life for Jesus. We flying with you, Lord. Wherever you lead, yes. We'll follow you. We'll follow you, Jesus. Wherever you lead, we'll go where you go and say what you say. I'm sold out for you, Jesus. I'm giving you all of me. We surrender, oh yes, to you. Oh, we love you, Jesus, for all you've done for me. Shavon. For me. Oh, we love you, Jesus, for all you've done. For me, mm -hmm. Shavon, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you this is a new season for you. And Shavon, the Holy Spirit said, I've had mercy upon you, and I will deliver you out of all your troubles. Jesus said to tell you that the devil tried to make you feel like I forgot you. I have not forgotten you. I will take care of your situation with your housing, with your living arrangements, finances. The Holy Spirit said, I am having you break away. I see you in a place right now, Shavon, where you're supposed to be single. The Holy Spirit said, I'm going to have you break away from any toxic person that's going to mess up what I'm going to bring to you. Holy Spirit said, I have you in my secret place and I'm going to bless you. And every promise I've made to you in secret, some things you can't even share with people because it's too prophetic, it's too special, and it's too big for them. 
yeah, yeah my ex-husband yeah keep that nigga exed out <laughs> You gotta keep that nigga X down, so God can bring bring a fresh a fresh a fresh wind to your life. We gonna get rid of Sugarfoot and Sweet Feet, daughter. You're blessed. I cover you in Jesus' name, Shavon. The Lord said, "I remember you and I love you. I'll do it for you." Shavon, I see you moving into a beautiful home. I see God raising up your sons to become mighty men of God. The Lord said, don't worry about anything. It seemed like one of your sons are going to be successful in some type of sport. I see even them bringing like great success to your life in the area financially. But God is going to use them mightily to open a lot of portals of blessing. The Lord going to restore this house and situation. I'm seeing the Lord say to tell you, yeah, me moving you from one place. Is really me moving you into the place that I always wanted you to be. The Lord said, fear not. My plan is prevailing in your life. You shall see my salvation. Is a spirit that's fighting you, Shaban. It comes from your ex-husband. I don't know if you noticed this. It causes your sons to get disrespectful to you and to not really respect you like they used to do. It's like to divide. It's like a rebellion. It's a form of witchcraft operating in them make them not look at you the same so they not sometimes it's like the devil will have them look at you like that's not my mama that's just a woman I ain't, I ain't. yeah so that spirit it want to govern your family but we break it in Jesus name in the name of Jesus Lord send the same wave in the mantle of my anointing right now into Sh Shivan's home Angels arrest her sons that they may serve and honor God. The Holy Spirit bring a shift and a change. And I agree as your prophet right now in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We, we give you all the glory for this. We give you all the glory for this. Saints, just receive. Just receive. Oh yes, those of you all that's suffering with any, any attack on your household in the name of Jesus, be free, be delivered right now in the name of Jesus. Shaban, you are loved, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're loved, God is with you. Holy Spirit shall do it for you. Oh yes. Come unto me, unto me, I'm giving you rest, oh yes, all your pain, all your rain, I'm changing it, rearranging it, oh yes. Oh, yes. Bless you, saints. Michelle Myers.
the Holy Spirit, I'm seeing you getting married. I'm seeing you enjoying marriage. Michelle, the Lord told me to tell you that you are, you're one of his special angels on the earth. He said to tell you that he's giving you the heart of angelic ministry. So, so your functionality on this earth is not uh, the same as everybody else. You've been given an angelic dimension from God as a form of honor. See the Lord letting you get married. You're wearing this white, beautiful dress. And I don't, I don't, you know, I'm seeing myself there. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm seeing myself there. Now, listen, I ain't getting married. Well, I'm not getting married, but I'm seeing myself like there in, 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 in you know, Harabasa Konadasiando, Repakuse Kalaha. I'm seeing myself in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the assembly of your marriage. The Holy Spirit told me to tell you, that the things that I'm doing, even with your schooling, the Holy Spirit said, you're going to find that I'm going to take you way further than your education. Your education won't even match where I'm actually taking you. The Lord said, I have so much bigger for you. So much greater for you that even your education, some people will tell you, you did further than what you was educated to do. The Lord told me to tell you, I don't understand it spiritually, but God said, Michelle, he didn't let you get poured into too much by parents, like a mother, father. Something like a mother, father. He didn't let you get poured into. It's like he kept you since you were born. You, you really a supernatural person. You've been created for the prophetic anointing. And now the Lord said since the year 2016, there was an angel sent into your life to begin to draw you from bad habits. draw you from toxic people in 2016 the Holy Spirit had this angel released into your life now this is 2018 2017 God continued the sanctification process now in 2018 the Lord said to tell you that you have graduated from all satanic power there's nothing that shall keep you from your destiny. Nothing shall hinder you. And there's a massive blessing coming to you, the Holy Spirit said this year. Mark my words. Jesus said, I shall bless you and cause you to abound with blessings, saith the Spirit of the living God. Oh, yes. Come unto me. Mm. Oh, yes, yes. We love you. Oh, saints, oh, saints, oh, saints. Oh, saints, oh, saints, oh, saints. Jesus, we give you all the glory. We magnify you. Come unto me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such a powerful place in God that we're in, saints. Those of you who are here, say, Jesus, I receive the fullness of your presence. I receive the fullness of your presence. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, 
Ghost Saints. Those of you who are on here, there's a fresh anointing coming upon your life. It's a fresh anointing coming upon your life. Saints, those of you on here, receive a fresh impartation of God's power right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Lord, let nobody underneath the sound of my voice. Don't let them miss. Don't let them miss you. There's some of you on here, the Holy Spirit drawing you right now. Just say, Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me. I receive you. Just tell them, saints. Let them come and take you over. Let them come and take you over. Just say, Lord, I repent. I receive you. I receive your presence. I let go of what I did, Lord. I repent. I repent. Just tell them, saints. Just tell them, Lord, I repent. I get rid of everything. I get rid of everything in my life. That's not of you. Just tell them, saints. This is just a fresh place in God. Just a fresh place in God. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Just receive. With the Lamb upon the throne. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Unto you. I receive, God. I receive, God. Oh, yes. You're the Lamb of God. Mm. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Just receive Him. Say, Lord, I repent. I receive you. I receive you. I receive you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, you're the Lamb. Just receive it where you are. Just receive it where you are. Kiara? Kiara? There's a strong anointing of God's power. The power of God be upon you, saints. His power goes with you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Jesus. 
Kiara, if you still on this line, please write me. Your presence makes me whole. Kiara spell with a K. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. This song say your presence makes me whole. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh yes, oh yes, your presence. Jesus, oh yes. But I'm locating her now. And <laughs> the saints, please don't be scared of me. I'm not going to do you no harm. Oh, yes. Jesus. Your presence makes me whole. You with the hands. How you doing? You with the hands. That's who I'm looking for. Is your name Kiara? Your first name Kiara, your last name? When Jesus comes, the tempest power is broken. It's a beautiful song. Kiara, when Jesus comes, God bless you. How you doing? All fear is wiped away. Here, I just want to tell you, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you, welcome into your new season with me. Jesus said, I've called you since you was a little girl. Lord said to tell you that there are open doors coming to you in the month of January. This will be a month of celebration for you. The Lord said that I'm bringing divine relationships to you, relationships that's going to bless you, not drain you, not distract you. The Lord said, I'm taking away every distraction from your atmosphere. Because in this month, you're going to rekindle a very close relationship with me. The Lord said, I shall use you. I shall use you prophetically. And Kiara, I don't know if you're connected to the ministry. Stay connected to the ministry. I don't know if you always just stay connected to the ministry. I believe that these things... That the Lord is telling me that you're going to walk in. You be willing and obedient. You'll see them come to pass. Very quickly. Before April. You'll see so many things that God is going to use you to do. The Lord is telling me to tell you that he's going to use you with women. And to influence a lot of women. And cause women to be delivered from emotional pain. From emotional Abuse is going to use you as his voice. And prepare yourself. You're going to experience a lot of jealousy. You're going to experience a lot of jealousy. But it won't prevail against you. The Lord shall cover you and exalt you higher. And favor shall be too much for your enemies. You won't even see them, nor will they have any effect on you. Look what the Bible said in uh, John chapter 14, verse 27. It says, peace I leave with you. Bless you, daughter. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. What's so powerful? It says, not as the world gives. So this is a different type of peace. This is prophetic peace. This is the peace that comes when you're a friend of God. This is the peace that comes when you're anointed of God. It's a different type of peace. It says, not as the world gives. So the world does give a certain type of peace. Wow. Saints, think about this. This is so powerful. The world gives a certain type of peace. It gives you a peace, tells you you're going to be okay. You got 401k. You know, all is going to be well. Just do this and do that. 
So the world gives a certain type of peace, but he said, this peace I give to you. This peace cannot be destroyed. It can't be hindered. Kiera, if you're still on this line, receive that same peace. Meaning as an establishment of spirit, nothing can take you out of where God has you. Men and women of God, receive that same peace into your life. Where nothing can take you out of position where God has you. It's not the peace that the world gives. It's the peace that Jesus gives. This is a supernatural peace. It can't be touched by the devil, bad reports, bad people, bad thoughts. This peace will evict every wrong thought from your mind. You'll know when thoughts are coming to you from the satanic kingdom. And you will stay in this peace. My peace I leave unto you. Not as the world gives peace. I leave my peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding. My peace I leave unto you. Saints, this is Prophet Joshua Holmes. Love you. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Never mind, Facebook, Dusty. Uh, follow me on Twitter right now. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on here. God bless you. I'll see you. Those of you all that sowed your seed, bless you. Greatness off of Psalm 81. Bless you, saints, in the name of Jesus. Love you much. Everybody, talk to you.